Keep your angels busy, part one. It's difficult to finish it all in a go, particularly with our time. But I'll try and do the first part today, and then we'll do the concluding part next week, Sunday. Amen. Uh, we have been looking at angels, their purpose, what they are meant to do in our life from the beginning of the month of June. What I didn't tell us, though, is that uh, the word angels appear in the Bible over 300 times. Amen. How many times? Over 300 times. About 350, 365 but between 300 and 400, depending on the version of the Bible that you have, the word angels appear. Then the other question is, how many words do you have in the Bible? I've told us before, close to a million. Somebody say 800,000 words. The whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, how many words? 800,000 words. And out of that 800,000 words, we have the word angels appearing for about 365, 350 times. Amen. Now, in the New Testament alone, 165 times the word angels appear. Amen. And if you want to know the most favorite book, which you all know, that is littered almost every chapter, almost every page with angels, the book of Revelation. Amen. Unto the angels of the church in Theatira, right? Unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right? Unto the angel of the church in Pagamos, right? Angels everywhere in the book of Revelation. Amen. Are you enjoying the statistics? Now, the reason why I'm doing all of that is because I'm going somewhere. Amen. There are some people in the Bible, they understand and they know angels. In fact, they expect angels. Some of them in the Old Testament, they have so good relationship with angels. In fact, at a time, they have to describe one of these people as smart as an angel. It's an English idiom. And that person they are referring to is the man called David. Somebody say David. David has so much understanding of angels to the point that all of the battles that he fought, he won all of them. Because he always deployed an angel called the angel of warfare. Amen. Amen. So some people in the Bible, they understand angels. In fact, they describe them as being smart as an angel. Another man that is so unique that understands angels very well. Or let's, let's go to a lady. Anybody want to give me an example of a lady that understood the workings of angels? Anybody want to try? Oh, God bless you. In fact, we, if she was so good that the name of the angel that was sent to her, we were given. We were only given names of angel particularly two times in the Bible. There is Gabriel, which is very known when somebody wants to have a baby. They will always send an angel to them. And that angel is called Gabriel to Elizabeth and to Mary. You know, when uh, Brother Frank was leading the prayer, I was also talking about the birth of Samson. When angel was sent to their parent, Manuel, we were not told the name of that angel. But I want to believe it's Gabriel. Amen. And I think I'm right. Because he was talking about, it has to do with conception. Amen. So Mary is very conversant with an angel. And that angel, we know the name, called Gabriel. Now, there are some people that are so bad with angels. They are so ignorant. Anybody want to give me a name? Ah, uh, one, one of them is what everybody needs to survive. You call it Job, but his name is Job. Amen. <laughs> and I told you before, if you are looking for Job, go and read the book of... <laughs> because that's the, only, that's the only man that his name is actually Job. But people don't read him anyway. I tell you, you know, so when the, when the man of God, you know, I was built, I was like that. And then the man told me, he said, I'm looking for Job. He said, Have you read the book of Job? I said, eh. He said, ah. He said, Before you finish it, you will get it. I said, Really? I was so eager. And do you know what? Before I finished it, I got it. <laughs> you won't even get to 10. You will get it. In fact, they will rush at you. Amen. Amen. I think I'm doing too many side attractions. But it's good. Amen. Somebody say, Job. Job is very ignorant about angel. To the point that he's so afraid. And he, he's so afraid of his children, that his children will disobey God, that his family are not walking in the fear of God, and so he'll be making sacrifices for them. 
And because of that fear, the devil dealt with him seriously. Somebody say, I will not be ignorant. You cannot be ignorant. Somebody say, I'm too defended to be a victim. And you are defended. There are angels all around you, all around your children. Nothing will go wrong in your life. Another man that was ignorant of angels is called Gehazi. Somebody say Gehazi. Gehazi. Nothing works in the hand of this man. He's a servant of God, but I pray for you if you are a pastor. May you not have Gehazi as your assistant. Nothing works in his hand. Amen. He's an unfaithful servant. He was everything he does. It's all about himself. Nothing. Even when they give him the rod. You know, when the child of the widow died and they gave him the rod. Okay, take this rod. Go and wake up the child of that, you know, Cyprophoenician woman. The rod doesn't work in his hand. Nothing works in the hand of Gehazi. No wonder. When the people came, the messengers, the armies of the king came to arrest Elisha. He was afraid. In fact, he said, Master, alas, we are surrounded. Look at the mountains. They have come to arrest you. The man of God said, are you kidding me? <laughs> when the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 7, that the angels of the Lord encamp round about those that fear the Lord and delivers them. If there is anything surrounding us, it's the angels of God. Ah, the man of God did not answer him. He now said, okay, you act you, what you are seeing is true, but what I am seeing is better. You know, pray that God should open the eyes of Gehazi. And the eyes of Gehazi was open. For the first time, he saw on the mountains round about him the host of heaven. Somebody said the host of heaven. The word host or hostess, which we use in our hairline, is from the word angels. It means steward. Somebody say steward. You know, many of you want to be an host or you want to be an hostess. That word is to be an angel, to, to serve like an angel. To be, that's why when you, when you ask them for anything, they, have you been on an airplane? If they are serving food, even if you ask them food ten times, they will keep serving you. That's what the angels are meant to do. They never get tired. But many of us, our angels are so fat. We have never deployed them. We've never sent them on an errand. They are not doing anything. Somebody say, use your angels. You must deploy them. Keep them busy. Don't let them rest. That's why in the, in the, in the, when you are on flight, you can say, can I have a drink, please? And they will serve you. Am I right? If you say, can I have a juice? They will serve you. Even if you have just taken that, any time, if you keep raising your hand up, they will keep serving you. Amen. Amen. That is how the angels, they are called the host of heaven. Somebody said the host of heaven. Like the hostess or the host you have in an airline. They, it means servant. To serve delicately. Somebody said to serve delicately. That is, you don't say before them it's an error. Amen. If you tell the angel, if you say, oh, 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 I'm dying, I'm dying. The angels of God will have to kill you. Amen. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, do not say before an angel it was an You don't say before them it's an error. They carry out your command to the letter. That's why Christians, we are careful of our words. Amen. You don't call your children, you good for nothing. Ah, when a believer is saying that, the angel will ensure that that child is good for nothing. They will carry it out. The angels are very robotic. Somebody say robotic. Are, you, are there people that can write Java codes that know how to program C++, C Sharp, Fortran, COBOL? You know those programs. Once you write them, they carry it out to the letter. We are entering into a dangerous phase in the world called artificial intelligence. And everybody is afraid. Even Warren Buffett is afraid. Artificial intelligence is worse than nuclear weapon. You know why? Once you give an instruction, it carries it out. It doesn't care whether it's going to hurt you or not. Amen. Amen. The same with angels. Our words are carried out to the letter. 
You cannot say to your husband, oh, you useless man. The angels of God will ensure that he becomes useless. Amen. You useless woman. I don't even know how I managed to marry you. The angels will ensure and carry it out to the letter. So that's why I love some of our parents. Even when we are misbehaving, you rich boy, you successful child, even when we are misbehaving, because the angels of God will carry that out and ensure that we become what? Successful. Somebody said, do not say it is an error. So I want to tell you, you need to be afraid of him. Somebody said, be afraid of him. <laughs> you know, when, when you are teaching like this, and you are trying to make people understand that it's very, very important to be very careful. Mm. Do not say before an angel, it is an error. Somebody say, do not say, it is an error. Mm. Many of us are suffering so many things we do not really bargain for. That's not what we meant when we say them. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. I want us to read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Angels are very robotic. They behave like robots. Amen. Amen. Hence, we must be careful. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Once the minister put it up, we'll read it. So, that means that our words, what we mean... We must carefully, you don't just say anything because they can kill. One, two, go. Let's read it together. Are we all here? One, two, go. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messenger of God. If it's an error. In fact, if you read King James, it said before the angel of God. It was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse? And destroy what? The work of your, hand. your work of your hand will not be destroyed. Amen. So you can see why Christians enter into trouble. Look at verse 6. He says, Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Neither say before the angel. It was what? It was an error. Don't say before them it's an error. They carry out the command to the letter. Amen. In fact, God told Moses. That be afraid of him. <laughs> but of course, because we are New Testament believers, we are not going to be afraid of an angel, but we just need to order our conversation aright. Somebody say, of order your conversation aright. So you must guide the way you speak when an angel is there. Guard the way you speak. God told Moses, be afraid of him because he will not pardon you. Once you make a miss, once you say it, they carry it out. That's why many times we pray, oh God, give me the gift of healing. Let me say it and let me see it. Ah, are you sure of what you're asking for? Because you get angry easily. Oh. <laughs> you just say, you child, be useless. And the child will be useless no matter what you do. <laughs> so that's why God is afraid to give us too much power sometimes. Oh God, let me have the power to say it and let it come to pass. Ah, it's a dangerous power. Somebody say it's dangerous. Very dangerous. Because even, not even against outsiders, even against your own family, even against your own people, you're already misusing it. Now think when God now give you that power over his people. That's why Moses did not see the promised land. He was so angry. You, you stiff-necked people. You stubborn people. Can I give you water from the, from the rock? And God said, even though you are my servant, you have no right to curse my people. You will not see the promised land. Amen. Amen. So we must be careful. This is very, very important, particularly as we are looking at putting your angels to work. They can work against us. If we are not careful. Amen. Amen. Somebody say I hear. I hear. So how do we keep our angels busy? Number one we need to know. What are their activities? I have about. About ten. Activities. Or duties. They are meant to carry out in our life. And next week we will see how to deploy them. 
there is an how. If you look at just part of next week, I'm going to say I've not finished this, so I'm already going to next week. If you look at this outline, there is something here that I wrote there. It's a formula on how to deploy angels. Jesus gave us that formula. When they came to arrest Jesus, Jesus said, ah, ah, have you come to arrest me with sticks, with bow, with arrow? Do you think I cannot now pray to my father, which is in heaven, and he will give me 12 legions of angels? Somebody say 12 legions. The word legion is a military term for a battalion. A battalion of about a battalion of troops is about 72,000 people. Jesus is saying, I can ask not for the people that came to arrest him, about 100 people. And he says, I'm going to ask for 12 battalion. I'm going to ask for 12 times 72,000 angels to come and protect me. Somebody say, We are too defended. You cannot be a victim. Amen. You are too protected. That's what I'm saying. But Jesus is saying, to get that done, I will need to ask who? The Father. You know, not what some white garment churches are now doing. And they begin to call Angel Yure, Angel, Angel, you know, Atrakaja, all sorts of names. Any name that is not in the Bible, they are fallen angels. We are only given, I've told you, there are only two names directly given in the Bible. Gabriel and Michael. And that's all. And that's all. Any other name is by implication. Maybe if they are carrying out healing, we say angel of healing. If they bring good news, angel of glad tidings. If they fight, angel of warfare. And that's it. There is nothing like a trakaja. There is nothing like in, in Daboski. All those. There is nothing like that. Amen. Those are, those are Christian thugs. There is nothing like that. Amen. There is nothing like that. And I'm telling you the truth. There is nothing like that. The Bible is very clear. Amen. 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 I want you to know because we are reading the Bible. Amen. Amen. And I know that God will help us in that name. So, to get angels on assignment, we pray to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we command them. And they act. They do what? They are going to action. Don't worry. We're going to full length of that next week. So, number one. What does angels do for us? Number one, they make the word of God effective. Amen. Any word of God you hear, it is the angel of God that makes them word effective. They bring the word of God to pass. Psalm 103. Let's open our Bible quickly. Psalm 103 verse 20 and 21. We have prayed with it. Psalm 103 verse 20 and 21. If you see it, you can just read it. Why the media is helping us. Someone, oh yeah, it's on the screen. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Bless the Lord, ye is angel. That do what? That excel in strength. And do what? That do his commandment. Acting. There is a lot there that you didn't see. Let's go back to that verse 20. The angels of God will only be provoked when you put a voice to the word, when the word is in your Bible, there is no voice. Meaning, until you start speaking the word, oh God, I shall be the head and not the tail. When you start saying it, when your voice joins the word, the angels are provoked. That's what it says there. Can you read it again? Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandment. Doing what? Hearkening unto what? The voice. When your voice comes on the word, the angels is triggered. Amen. When we put our voice to the word, they are triggered. They say, yes, that's correct. That's what the word says. And they will ensure it's performed. Oh Lord, you have said I'm going to be the head and not the tail. When you start saying that repeatedly, it will, trigger, it will be triggered. Amen. They make the word of God effective. So, the angels of God is not going to confirm what is not in the word. Oh God, let my wife die. That's not in the Bible. Amen. Somebody said that's not in the scripture. So, the angels can empower that. Amen. Oh God, let my husband die. That's not in the scriptures. They won't empower that. 
they only enforce the word of God. So we put our voice to the word and then they are triggered. Amen. Amen. Number two, they minister God's pleasure to the saints. Somebody say pleasure. pleasure. The opposite of the word pleasure is pleasure. That leads to heart attack. When people are under constant pressure, pressure, pressure on every side, they will have heart attack. They will die. What they need is pleasure. It is the angel of God that ministers the pleasure of God. Let's open our Bible to Exodus 22, 18. Whatever the Bible says, the angels are there to carry it out. Amen. Amen. Exodus 22, verse 18. If you see it, you can read it. Exodus 22, 18. They carry out the word of God. Can you read it? Can we read it together? One, two, go. Thou shall not suffer a witch to live. Meaning, when you, when you now say, instead of saying, let somebody close to you that you can say, let every witch die. The angel will say, yes, that is in the Bible. They will carry it out. That, they enforce the word of God. When you have been given your tithe and nothing is working, then Malachi 3.10 belongs to you. They carry out the pleasure of God. Can we open a Bible there? Malachi 3 verse 10. The Bible says, God will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Whatever is always coming when you have money. Can we read it together? One, two, go. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with say the Lord of the word host, you can put angels there. It means the Lord of angels. I told you, hosts or hostess is another word for angels. In fact, the word hostess is actually come, it's coming from the word angel to serve delicately. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of angels, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, I therefore command the angels of this church to open the windows of heaven concerning you. And pour you out a single blessing. Not, you can, uh, you know, uh, he didn't say blessing in plural. One blessing. But that one, you will never recover from it the remaining days of your life. I speak to you by the word of the Lord. A blessing is coming for you this week. It will be too much for you to carry. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is a breakthrough that can tear every night. That can cause every boat to sink. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Once the angels are there, so the tithe is not ordinary. There is an angelic operation. That's where the Lord of hosts comes in. I pray for every of your sacrifices, every of your offering, let the angels of God be provoked into organizing a giving back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, give. It shall be given. Then the question is, by who? Somebody say, by who? Sometimes when you read the Bible, you need to take note of some things there. That they are very silent. Luke 6, 38. He said, give. Talking about us. You give. He said, it shall be given to you. The Bible conceal the giver. Who is giving back to you? I pray for you. Men will give back to you. People that you don't know, they will give back to you. People you know, they will give to you. They will build up your walls. Do you know it is not life when everything you enjoy is what, what you work for? That's not a good life. I'm telling you the truth. It's a hard life. When for you to enjoy life, you have to be the one to work for it. No. Beginning from today, angels will organize a giving back to you. He said you will dwell in houses you did not build. I pray for you. No matter how expensive it gets, in your lifetime, you will receive the gift of a house. Amen. Your children will tell you, mom and dad, that's for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That is what they do. It shall be given to you. By who? You, you, <laughs> he didn't say, but I tell, look at what is given back to you. Somebody say, good measure. Somebody say, press down. Somebody say shaking together. Somebody say running over. That becomes your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. A believer 
as a believer, you must not only think, if, you're, if all you think is that your salary is what you are going to live on, you will never have enough. God forbid. Look, even when you are on 200k per annum, it's still not enough. <laughs> Somebody say it's not enough. Ah, we know them. They are on very big salary. And they are still the one that will be asking for the office to give them IOU before the end of the month. <laughs> it's not how big oh. I therefore pray for you. All that you need to live a comfortable life, I command the angels of God to work it out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They minister God's pleasure to the people of God. Number three, they are committed to your all-round safety. Somebody say all-round safety. Even your toes are not permitted to be dashed against a stone. Somebody say, even my toes. But you know the problem with believers? He said, they will keep you in all your ways. You will not dash your feet against a stone. We read it, Psalm 92. But the problem with believers is this. Psalm 92, Psalm 91 rather, from verse 9 to 14. The problem with believers is this. When they dash their feet against a stone, they just continue to go. I told you last week, what must you say? No, 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 no. I told you, my angels, we are you. Because you are not doing your job. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to. But when you did that and you don't question them, then you can, the person can have an accident and then nothing will happen. You know, when you are training your children at home, when you say, don't go there, don't take mommy's phone, and your daughter takes mommy's phone, no, no consequence. Do you know what will happen? Don't put your hand on fire. What would they do? They will put their hand on fire. But when you say, don't take mommy's phone, put it down, and then you do a little bit of this. A little bit of this. Ah! It's called the carrot and the stick. It's not every time you give the carrot, the carrot. When they do what is wrong, you bring out what? Of course, don't kill them. You know, some people, some people they, are, they are beating the children as if it's the... They are beating, they are, they are fighting their mates. No. It's just to say, no, don't go there. It's a little spark on the hand. It's not to now kill them. No, 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 no. You know, some people, you see some father boxing. No, no, no. We are not, you are not fighting my Tyson. Amen. Amen. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that once you dash your feet against a stone, you must query that. Somebody say, I must query that. Because the Bible forbids that. Amen. He said, you will not dash your feet against a stone. They will keep you in all your ways. I therefore pray for you. Even the very hair of your hair, they are what? They are all numbered. Your hair will no longer fall without your attention. Meaning nothing is permitted to go wrong around you without you knowing about it. Amen. Some people, until they do all sorts of evil against them, they still don't know. They are so passive, not sharp spiritually. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Number four, they are a defense in conflict. Somebody said they are angels of warfare. They know how to fight. Let's open our Bible, Psalm 20. We just quickly read that to one to the end. There is a lot of angels, especially when you read the Psalms. That's why if you want to really know a man that knows about angels, David is your friend. John the Beloved is your friend. Those two guys, they understand it. And they live those lives. And they must be your mentor when it comes to the angelic realm. Amen. Psalm 20. From verse 1. Psalm 20, not Psalm 1. Psalm 20. From verse 1. All right. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Somebody say amen. amen. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Amen. Verse 2. The Lord will send you help from his sanctuary. Amen. And strengthen you out of Zion. Amen. When the Bible says God is going to send you help, it means he's going to send you angels. The only help he sent are the angels. The mobile heavenly host of angelic beasts. They becomes your helper beginning from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, he will remember all your offerings. When it comes to your offering, your tithe, answering, you need angelic ministration. I pray for you. The angels of heaven, they will organize a giving back to you. 
they will organize a contract to you. Look, have you gone for an interview before? And the man is just laughing with you. And say, oh, how are you? What did you eat this morning? How, how was the traffic? And then he said, we are, we are done. Is that an interview? No, that was a chat. The next one, that is how it's going to be. I said, the next one, that is how it's going to be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, remember all your offering. Accept your bond sacrifices. Look at verse 4. Grant you according to your heart's desire. Have you ever... No, sometimes you are going on the road. And it happens to me a lot of times. And you see a house. You say, wow. So, it's a human being with one head, one nose, one mouth, two hands, two legs that will live in this place. Oh God, where is mine? Beginning from today, anything you desire, receive it in the name of Jesus. Then make sure you get it according to your desire. Have you just walked back, maybe and do seams, where we have Maserati there, and you see that Lambo, and you see that Porsche, and you see that, you know, maybe the car that David Park, and you see that uh, whatever it is, and you say, oh God, I like this car, golden wheels, receive it in the name of Jesus. There is nothing wrong with your heart's desire. You can have it. Amen. Beginning from today, you will no longer have what is called a wasted desires. Every of your heart's desire, I command they are granted in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, grant you according to your heart. You wish that everything works out well for your family. Receive it in the name of Jesus and fulfill all your counsel. This is a good life. Somebody said this is a good life. And it's possible. Somebody said it's possible. It will grant your desire. It will grant all your counsel. Everything you think for your children, for them to be successful, to be healthy, their well-being, they are coming to pass in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, we will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners and the Lord will fulfill all your petition. He said, now I know that the Lord saved his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven and the saving strength of his right hand. Amen. 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 God is committed to defend you when you are in conflict. The next one, the angels are our eternal bodyguards. Somebody say eternal. Bodyguards. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is something I need to tell you. You will laugh now. Are you ready? Look at me. You know, there is always somebody that is working with you every time. Anybody knows the person? Your shadow. <laughs> Amen. Your shadow is eternally committed to you. Do you know? Can I shock you? It's a reflection of your angels. Amen. That's why sometimes, depending on the way the light is zoomed at you, they are, they are really big. Amen. Beginning from today, your angels will no longer be separated from you. When he said, let the children come to me, Jesus gave a reason why they must come. He said, they are angels. Somebody said, they are angels. Do you know what shocks me there? Jesus, why is it that you only refer to their angels when they are children? And when we become old, we lose. Because when we become old, our brain wants to do everything for ourselves. We think, I must do it by myself. I want to do it by myself. I want to... That's not the way to live. But for children, even when the father is throwing the child up, he's still laughing. He's still, he, because he knows the father will catch him. But look at adults. Once you throw them up, hey, you want to kill me? You are, you are wicked. Amen. Somebody say, relax. Somebody say, relax. This God can kill you. Amen. Your angels are on duty 24-7. Beginning from today, they will ensure you are defended everywhere you go. You are the original celebrity. You know, I was reading about Taylor Swift. And, you know, I said, ah, Pastor, do you read? Ah, yes, I do, and I'll tell you why. They are talking, they are saying something that they call it swift, 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 swift nomics. It's a kind of economics of music. Where every person singing now, their yardstick of measure is now according to that young lady. 
This lady has bodyguards. Somebody say bodyguards. You talk of Michael Jackson, they have bodyguards. Do you know, it originally belongs to us. I'm praying for somebody here. Even in your lifetime, literally, you will have bodyguards. That when you are going to church, about 20 of them are already checking the chair. They are checking the chair. Me, who, wants to, who wants to kill him? Amen. <laughs> that becomes your portion in the name of Jesus. I say, what kind of a pastor is this? <laughs> you must live well, oh. I say, you must live well. You will be all that God has destined you to be. You will not live one dot short of your purpose in Christ. Amen. You are the eternal, original celebrity. You are. Somebody say, I'm a celebrity. Look, can I shock you? A driver will be driving you very soon. The next job coming will come with a driver. They will open the door for you. I know many of our ladies want this. We say, I don't know why my husband is not opening the door for me. Don't worry. A bodyguard will do it. <laughs> Amen. And you know, men are so funny. When the bodyguard is now opening it, he will now start opening it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I will not allow bodyguard to take away my wife. <laughs> anyway, on a lighter move, let's get on to business. The next one. They deliver the saints from every prison of life. That's what angels do. They can deliver from lions. The Bible says the devil is roaring like a lion, looking from whom to devour. But the work of the angels is to shut the mouth of the lions. Every lion smile that is open against you, I see their mouth shut in the name of Jesus. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. And when the king came to the, to the place where they lock off, to the den, where they lock up Daniel over the night, and he called his name Daniel, servant of the Most High God. He was thinking there would be no sound. Because he was thrown into the lion's den. Look at his response. Look at the response of, of Daniel. Somebody that was thrown into a lion's den. Can I pray for you? No matter where you are thrown into, and they think there will be no sound from there, you will still make a sound. What is meant to kill you, we announce you. What is meant to put you down, we promote you. Look at the response of them. He said, my God sent his angel. Somebody say, my angel. And shut the lion's mouth. Who tell you? They can, look, it doesn't matter how wicked they are. Your angel can shut their mouth. Whatever mouth of any witch, any wizard, any occultic powers that is open against your destiny, either here or far away where you come from, I command their mouth shut in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me. They will not hurt you. Because I was found innocent. Because you are living a good life. Because you are believing in Christ. You are living righteous as we have learned today. You are not a cultural Christian. You are a proper Christian. And also, oh king, I have done no wrong before you. Amen. Amen. The angels of God are powerful. Hallelujah. Now, angels of God. Can I tell you this? Destiny is very heavy. Can you say it like that? There is no destiny that is ordinary. You are the one that thinks so. That's why you, go, you wonder, why am I going through all this battle? Only me? This has happened. That has happened. And you can point to a series of things that has happened. Can I tell you? It's because of the glory that you carry. Your destiny is very heavy. Heavy. Even you yourself, you don't understand it. You don't. You know where you are going? You don't. If God show you a glimpse of what is available tomorrow, you will scream. <laughs> and that's why you, there is no person of what in the Bible that did great things that doesn't deploy the ministry of angels. Even Jesus Christ is called the anointed one. He needs the ministry of angels. The Bible say he was praying so much. His sweat was like drops of blood. The Bible said, there appeared an angel unto him, strengthening him. You need an angel. Oh. Anointing is no substitute for the angel's ministry. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, your destiny is heavy. Somebody say, my destiny is heavy. You are called to be glorified. You are a chosen man. In fact, the Bible calls you a city. Some of you living in one bedroom. The Bible says you have a whole city. Do you know where our father and the Lord was living before? A boy's quarter, two bedroom. And this is a man with the destiny of a campground that can accommodate six million per time. Hi! Somebody said, my destiny is heavy. That's why you need angels to be deployed. It's not Harvard. It's not AUT. It's not University of Auckland that will deliver it. It's heavier than them. Some of you, you are, in fact, you have 10 universities inside you. Do you think AUT can deliver that? No. They can't. Your destiny is heavy. Somebody say, my destiny is heavy. It's heavy and colorful. Somebody say, it is colorful. And that's why you need the angel deployed so that you can realize all of this. I want you to take this study very seriously. Somebody say, my destiny is heavy. Let's open our Bible so we can see that and then we can go. Very heavy. You are Exodus 23 verse 20. Exodus 23 verse 20. It's so heavy that you need angelic help to really come into limelight. And I'm praying for you. You will not miss your place. Oh, let's read it together. One, two, go. Behold, I sent an angel before you. Now we're going to read it again. You will put your name there. Because he's talking about you, really. Oh, yeah, one, two, go. Behold, I sent an angel before you, Ayo, to keep Ayo in the way and bring Ayo into the place which I have. Yeah. Which I have. Yeah. Can I shock you? God is not doing anything new. Your greatness, your beauty, your kingship, your elevation, your mansion, they are already prepared. But you need somebody to take you there. Can I tell you something? Some of you, your office with your three computers, I can even see it as I'm standing here, with your three computers there, lined up, it's already ready. But somebody needs to take you and put you there. You will meet with that person this week. Somebody must bring you there. It's not going to be done. It's already done. Hey, the contract is ready. All things are now ready. I see the angels of God taking you by the hand and planting you there. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look, where God is taking you, man can't take you there. In fact, if man sees it, they will be jealous. You didn't hear me. I say if man see where God is taking you, he will become jealous. He will wonder, wow, how do you give such things to a man? That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, my angels, take me to the prepared place. Take me to my prepared place. Take me to my office. Where my computers are already standing. Some of you, your office, there is your name on the door. I'm already seeing some names on the door. Even with doctor on it, your name's on the door. And you are here. I pray for you. The Lord will push you there. In the mighty name of Jesus. The angels of God, they give answers to prayers. Ah, you say, but it's God that answers prayer. I know. But the angels do what? There are some angels, their work is to answer prayer. In fact, can I tell you, every prayer you pray is converted to an incense, to a smoke, and cocked up in a bottle. And an angel is carrying that bottle. Every of your prayer. <laughs> is the Bible going to read Revelation? Is there. Is there. Is there. I pray for you. Every of your prayer cocked up in a bottle. I see them release the senses in the mighty name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. We're almost done. But I want you to take this message very seriously. You can go and listen to it again. It's on, it's on YouTube or wherever it is. Make sure you understand it. Then he said to me, do not fear Daniel. You can put your name there. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. Anytime you start praying in the month of May, anywhere, God say he already heard you. And I have come because of your words. Now look at verse 13. 
but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, we stood me 20 and one days, the old days of the fasting and prayer. And behold, Michael, one of the archangels, arch means the head of angels, one of the chief princes, yeah, that's what I'm saying, came to help me. I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Amen. Amen. This man prayed and God answered. But when the answer was coming, there was a demon called Prince of Persia that said, this answer will never go. Many of your answers have been released. Your wife released. Your husband released. Your house is released. Your children you released. Your boys released. Your twins released. Your girls released. Your breakthrough released. Everything concerning you released. I therefore pray every Prince of Persia, I command them destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. The angels of God, they organize answers. And they see to it that we get answers to our prayer. Finally, finally, <laughs> the angels of God tells you of things to come in the future. So many things you don't understand, they give you understanding. They unravel what you call mysteries. Somebody say mysteries. Mystery means Behind the scene. Somebody said behind the scene. Yeah. You see somebody who is sick. Headache. You give Panadol. Everything. But headache refused to go. Somebody say there is a behind the scene. Yeah. Have you taken to an hospital before? I have. And they check the person. Stethoscope. MRI. CT scan. And they found nothing. But the person is sick. Somebody said behind the scene. The angels, they unravel what is behind the scene that you call mysteries. Amen. The whole book of Revelation is a mystery unravel to one man called John the Beloved. Can I tell you something? We live in a world where people that are honored, paid, are people that understand mysteries. There is no work, no career that you get into that doesn't have special place where you need special understanding. You need mist. When you want to understand, you know, like you are talking of, you know, nuclear weapon. Why is it that only few countries understand it? And when they are interviewing the American president, one of those American presidents, why do you invest in nuclear weapon? Can I tell you his response? <laughs> you will be shocked at his answer. He said, we are not developing nuclear weapon because they are easy. We are doing it because they are hard. Somebody said they are hard. If you are running away from hard things, you don't become, the, you, they don't pay you. If your job that you are doing can be done by Folani and Emmanuel, why should we pay you $150,000 a year? Why? When Emmanuel and Folani can do it, and I can give them $30,000 a year, and they'll be jumping and say, Daddy, Mommy, I got a good job. Why? So, when you want to be rewarded for hard things, then you must understand mysteries. Then you need angelic help. So that when you see those terrible formulas, you know what it means. Beginning from today, nothing written by any mortal man will be hard for you to understand. You didn't hear me. I say beginning from today, whatever is written that a man understands, you will equally understand. Whatever they call hard cause, medicine, whatever it is, uh, nuclear technology, beginning from today, the, the best men and women in those fields, they are coming from this assembly. Amen. Amen. They unravel mysteries. That's why they describe David. He said, David, my Lord, is as smart as the angels of God. Beginning from today, the smartness of an angel becomes your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no one under the sound of my voice that will end up a dollar, the last in class, in the name of Jesus Christ. If there are ten of you in that course, become the best. I said become the very best. If there are only two of you in that course, become the very, very best. Because they unravel mysteries. They give you, they impart wisdom. Let's read it and then we can pray. Revelation 1 verse 1. That's what they do. They give mysteries. 
They unravel mysteries. And when you are so close to them, that's why when they write on the wall, Mene, Mene, take off acid. And the king of Babylon was confused. What does this mean? He said, don't wait. He said, there is, an, there is a man in our kingdom. His name is Daniel. He has the wisdom of spirits. The wisdom of gods beginning from today. Wisdom that goes beyond a normal man. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Any interview, you will hate them. I don't like that. Amen. I say any interview, you will clear them. In the name of Jesus. We are not dollar Christians. Some people think we are Christians because we are lazy. No! A million times no! A million times no! I beg your pardon. No! Look at it. He said, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his what? To his servant John. Look at Revelation 17 verse 7. They show us mystery. He said, but the angel said to me, can you see? But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery. Beginning from now, they will give you the answer. I said, they will give you the answer. He said, I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. You think it's only in cartoon. They have seven heads and ten horns. They have been in the Bible. The cartoon, they copied from here. Look, all those cartoons you want, it's seven head, and they do all sorts of funny, funny things. They are, they are really, it is from here. Beginning from today, every hard sentences, you will dissolve them. Every dream, you will interpret them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, Zechariah chapter 1 verse 19. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 19. We are, we are in for a treat. This is going to be your best year ever. In what you have not seen before, the Lord will bring to you. Look at Zechariah chapter 1 verse 19. He said, and I said to the angel, who talk with me? What are these? You can ask them questions. Somebody said we can ask them questions. You know, sometimes, you know, we are doing research. And we are saying, we keep doing literature review. Stop that. Go spiritual, man. Amen. He said, I asked the angel, what are these? Look at, and the angel answered, they will answer you. I said, they will answer you. They, sometimes they answer by bringing the answer to you. I don't know if you get that. When they bring the answer, meaning what you are looking for, they bring it. So the answer is unnecessary. Beginning from today, that becomes your portion. So he answered me, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. This man of God was seeing problem everywhere. And he doesn't know why. He kept on praying. And then the angel told him, don't waste your time. These horns, you see, they are the cause of the problem. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Whoa. Let's be on our feet. Time is fast. I know we can be here for so long. Let's begin to tell them and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command that my angel become very active. No more laziness. It's not meant to come and be singing for you or singing with you. It's meant to work. I command you to get into active service right now. In the laboratory. I we ready? Are we ready? Discovery Center is on a flight. On a, on a flight of angelic violence. They have been provoked already. I've warned you. Don't say bad things before them because they behave very robotic. Don't say before them it's an error. They may not forgive that. It is what you say first that they will do. There is no, uh, I change my mind. No. Once you say it, they carry it out. Let them take me to my place of blessing. I told you, I see you already. Before your three computers in front of you, let that angel on assignment take you by the hand and drop you right there. He said, he will give you all your heart's desire. Every of your intention, every of your heart's desire, I see them coming to pass now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you in any pit? Are you in any prison of life? No lion can open their mouth against you. 
I command every lion of my life. I command their mouth shut. In the name of Jesus. They will organize a giving back to you. We have what we call the angels of wealth. The angels of prosperity. They will take you to your streets of gold. They will take you into your place of abundance. They will build goodly houses for you. They will organize bodyguards around you. Because your destiny is precious. Your destiny is colorful. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We give you great praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I will sing a song before Brother Femi comes. Colorful and it's bright. I will get there. <laughs> it's colorful and it's bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I must get there. <laughs> My future is bright. I will get there. It's colorful, colorful, and it's bright. I will get there. I say, colorful, and it's bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I must get there. My future is bright. I will get there. It's colorful, colorful, and it's bright. I will get there. I say, colorful. And it's bright, I will get there. Hey, my future is bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I will it's colorful, colorful, and it's bright. I will get it's so colorful, colorful, and it's bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I want you to sing it. Colorful and it's bright. I will get. It's colorful and it's bright. I will get. Oh yes, future is. Are you singing it? Are you singing it with your heart? You will get there. You will become the vice chancellor. I say to you. By the word of the Lord, every opposition will be pulled down. You will get that job by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The angel of God behind this commission is running with you. They will bring you to your place of assignment, your place of enlargement, your place of enthronement. You will get there. 